Would you mind telling us a, a little bit about where this book came from? Well, yeah, of course. Um, so, so this is inspired by a, a very difficult time in, in my life, uh, 12, just over 12 years ago, when one of my twin sons was critically ill. We spent a number of weeks, uh, months in um, uh, neonatal intensive care. And um, we reached a point where we had to make a very difficult decision about our son's future. Mm. Um, and uh, I remember asking, um, I remember asking the doctor what would happen if my husband and I wanted different things. This, this, suddenly this was something that we couldn't compromise on. Uh, and she, she just said, you, you have to because the alternative is unthinkable. Mm. And the book that I've written is about the unthinkable. So it's about a, a couple, Max and Pip, who, who love each other very much, but who love their son more and want different things for him. It seems to be a very different book to the ones that you've written before, but actually what you do rather brilliantly is the first half of the book you, you show the, the setup, you, you explain their situation uh, for Max and Pip, and then the book kind of does a very clever split halfway through and we see basically the two trajectories, mm. the choice that they make going either way and we see what might have happened. And reading those bits, I had a vision of you in your office or wherever you write with presumably post-it notes all over the wall <laughs> as you worked out the sort of the different time frames. Do you know what? It's a funny thing because I, I didn't for, for this book. And so when I've written my, my thrillers, I'm, I'm a real plotter. You know, I, I, I love, I think we probably spoke about this before because mm. I, we, was, we were also speaking with Ruth Ware, who I know doesn't plot. And, um, and so I, I plan everything out and I plan the twists and turns. And this book was very, very different. And I think it's because it's fundamentally a, a character-led book. And so I knew, I know Max and Pip so well mm. that really writing their stories was genuinely about listening to them and understanding what choices they would make and how they'd feel about it and what direction those decisions would lead them in. So it, it was a completely different experience um, and one I really enjoyed. You say that you know Max and Pitt very well and I feel as though I do after having read the book because you each chapter is, is from their point of view. You do involve the, a doctor's point of view as well but for the most part it is Max mm. and Pip. And in the second half of the book, seeing their different, traje <laughs> seeing their different trajectories because of the, the choices that are made, um, you get to reveal a lot about their characters. Did you have a side that you had taken whilst you were writing it or did you have to be very fair? To I was really it? worried that I would end up taking a side and in fact what happened was I, I sort of overcompensated in a way and so I, um, I'm not going to tell you which, which, who I sided with initially but um, I worked so hard to make sure that I didn't uh, come across as, as sort of not on the side of the other person, that actually it, it was my my sort of first character that, that I then had to go back to and um, and do some more work on. Um, but n no, I th by the time I, I finished the book and I was reading through it for the last time, what I found is that I I vacillated from one to the other, you know, as, as I switched chapters mm. um, and, and was back inside um, each of their heads in turn, I, I sided with them and I cheered them on and, um, and I hope, I think that's what will happen for readers as well. And I suppose at its very heart the book is about uh, about family, it's about what mm. makes up a family unit and, and how we have to work to make it survive. Um, what, what other things did you discover about how family works as you were writing the book? I suppose I, what I was looking at were how uh, how we make those decisions and how those decisions change the future of of family dynamics because it's not just about the the couple in in this story it's about their family mm. and uh, you know and how they feel uh, about what's happening um, and uh, you, you know every, everyone feels like they own a piece of this child um, and and looking outside the family the the general public you know the the media everyone feels as though they know what should happen mm. um, and that has a, a huge impact on the the family dynamics and on on the pressure that's already happening between these two people i suppose the trickiest question in the book is the one that, the, that max and Pippa are trying to answer which is do you make a decision of 
quality of life mm. or quantity of life. Um, I suppose most readers will have their own idea about what their answer to that question might be. But again, I wondered, did, did you have any clearer idea of how you felt about that personally after finishing the book and, of course, having been through your own I situation? Found, I found it really therapeutic, I suppose, travelling this, this journey and exploring the, the what-ifs. So we, we chose to allow our son to, to die. We felt that the, the quality of life that he was anticipated to have if we kept him alive was was not my definition of a life mm. um, and that keeping him alive would have been a selfish act for us not not an act of love for, for him um, but every time over the last 12 years I've seen a profoundly disabled child I've asked myself what would have happened if I'd made a, a different decision and so writing the book enabled me to travel those two paths and to sort of lay to rest those ghosts a little mm. bit. Um, I think that every, you know, every case is different. Everyone's definition of life is different. Um, and we're perhaps very used to talking about these sorts of things in relation to older people mm. or in relation to people who, adults with terminal illnesses, um, who, who might choose to go somewhere like Dignitas, who, you know, lots of, of discussion around end of life care for adults. But somehow when it's a child, a very young child, it's a much harder conversation to have um, because they're not, they're not, they, they've got no input into it. All the adults around them, the, the medical professionals and the, and the parents are making those decisions for them. They, they have no agency. Mm. And so it becomes much more sensitive and, and much harder to know that you're doing the right thing. Either way, it's that fork. Um, I, in, in the book, um, I, I quote from my favourite poem, which is Robert Frost's The Road Not Taken. And he, um, he, he talks about standing in that fork in the road and wishing that you could see at the, to the end of each of, of the two paths, because then you'd know which one to take. And of course, we, we don't know that. All we can do is put one foot in front of the other and take one path and hope that it's the right one mm. and make a life out of that path and that's really the the point I suppose of, of the book the essence of it and and the essence of, of what's suggested by the title after the end it's it's not about a child who dies it's not about uh, a, a, a tragedy it's about rebuilding a life and finding happiness again and making a life after something terrible has happened we won't tell people what happens at the end of those two paths, uh, but no. there's a lot of stuff in there. So, Claire, thank you so much for telling us a little bit more That's about the book. It's a pleasure. Thank you for having me.